Good morning, folks. It's now 20 to 6. I've just got up and it's bright in the house because the lights are on. But things are looking kind of dim for me because, you know, I went through this cataract surgery on the right eye and I have been compelled to wear these shades. I said, even in the house, yes, you have to wear these shades, even in the house. So here I am now, walking around in the semi-darkness due to the shades, and I'm about to have breakfast. Mama Lou is fast asleep, but I know that if she comes out here now, she'll be annoyed with me for having jumped the gun, so to speak. But I am used to getting up early, and um, <clears throat> I have this medication that I must, I must put in my eye every hour. Of course, I went to bed, I would think, let me check my records here. Uh, my last drop went in at um, 8.10. And I said, no, I must sleep now because, you know, when you have drops to put in every hour, you're very conscious that you can't doze off. Maybe, you know, you, you're overrunning by 10, 15 minutes and then you have to make a new hour again. So it has been quite a, quite a challenge putting drops every hour until, well, today it will be every two hours. And I had, I just put some in. At what time did I put it in? At 5.20. So at uh, 7.20, the next drop is going to be put in. But it's quite a thing, you know, to to have a cataract surgery or any kind of surgery and you don't have the support at home. It must be very lonesome. I have been fortunate to have Mama Lou and I tell you the truth, I am so happy to have Lasana here. Because Lasana did, maybe I should show you what he did before I move any further. As I got up very early yesterday morning, Tony and Shanta were taken to the airport, and Lasana put this house back in order. Not that they had it in disorder, but he spruced it up nicely, and he did a lovely job everywhere, particularly in this washroom. I have been trying my very best lately to see if I can get this thing under control and Lasana came here and did a marvelous job marvelous job he has helped me greatly taking me here to the specialist taking me down to the medical center and um, I am grateful for all that he done, he's done for me for us the thing about Lasana is that Lasana has always thrown himself into gear to get things done. Even when he was in Cora there, I, I used to admire how he would, he would be helping out in the home with the kids. Oh yes. One of the things that we really need in recovery period is good support. When you have good support, you're in good business. This morning I want to, I, I'm trying to, a little, I'm, I'm trying to wean myself from regular coffee and having decaf. I remember reading something about a guy who acted in, I think it was Liam Neeson, who acted in uh, Taken, that famous show. And um, they said that he had a lot of body aches. And they found out that, you know, even while moving on the set, it was, he was lumbering and difficult and pain all over the body. And they attributed it to excessive intake of coffee. But, you know, being of Spanish background, I love the coffee. I guess Americans love the coffee too, more than anybody else. Like Venezuelans, they also love the coffee. So Neon Nathan was put on decaf. And <laughs> he was put on decaf. And now he's addicted to decaf. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So I'm going to have a very simple meal of bread and bit of cheese and maybe some strawberry jam just to tide me over a bit
if Mamalu were up, she would have um, wanted to make something special, but she's done enough. She's doing it. She's quite a beautiful wife. She's doing plenty for me. When I had my heart attack, you know, she she gave herself wholly to it. She helped me recover nicely. She had to fight up at all those old pills. And I'll tell you the truth. I was asking the Lord really to help me in this surgery that I wouldn't be a strain to her. So I am glad to be up early. My son is still asleep. But I am glad to be up early so that I can help myself and take some of that pressure off of her. It's a very simple meal. But you know, uh, the thing about not being able to read when you have a cataract surgery for a while, not being able to read, not being able to venture out into bright lights. And, and strange enough, last night I got a call from my daughter. Here how the conversation runs. Yes, hello. Oh, Lisa, how are you there? Mm. Are you wearing your shades? Yes, I'm wearing my shades. I'm wearing my shades. What, I have to wear my shades even in the night? In the house? Yes. Listen, that sounds kind of ridiculous. No, 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 no. What? You mean, to, you mean to say I could only take this off when it is pitch dark? Yes. Lisa, that sounds a little extreme. Not extreme? Okay, okay, I'll wear my shades. Thank you. So you see, friends, that's how right now, not to be an obstinate, rebellious patient, I am wearing my shades. So the thing about it is that um, since you can read and you are advised not to read, you are advised not to read, you find yourself lying in bed, you have a lot of time to think. So what do you think about? People have different circumstances under which they live. What would they think about? You know, I began to think about my dad. My dad was a very hard working fellow. He worked in a store in full of Spain for many years, Miller's stores, Henry Street. He was a beekeeper and um, he was a planter. He was a tailor. Although he did a bad job on my first pants in secondary school. <laughs> I can't find the button this morning, so maybe it's a good thing anyway. And um, he was a very hard working man, and there were 11 of us, plus mother and dad. And one day I went walking for him. I was a little fella, you know. He must have looked like a giant to me, but I was very young. I don't know if I was more than five. Perhaps I was five. And we went down, came out of, uh, from the driveway, walked down the road to what we call the cocoa area. And I was holding his hand. I remember that clearly. And something just came over me where I felt very, I felt sad for him. I don't know why. I don't know what I picked up in his, in his, but I felt that he was a lonely man at that point. And, and I squeezed his hand and I said, I looked up and I remember saying, Father, and he looked down and I said, I love him, you know. And he squeezed my hand and I have never forgotten that. Yeah, so these are the little things that cross your mind. You know, I've been thinking also of Louise and our marriage, how she has been really there for me. She has been really a stalwart in my life, a pillar. <clears throat> I think of the children too, four of them, Lisa, Liba, Asana, Lyndon. Lyndon brought his kids to see me. I think it was Friday night. I was lying in bed. And um, Anna walked in. And she was very, very, very quiet. He must have told her that Grandpa had some surgery. 
and we're going to see him. And he, um, she walked in there very quiet. And I wondered when I looked at her, what was she thinking about this old man lying in bed? What was she expecting to see? And usually Anna is, um, you know, very gypsy-like. She would move fast and all of that. And I said to Anna, Anna, come. And she walks up to me. She embraced me and she kissed me. Haley did the same thing. And then they left the room and then and I began to chat about different things. But you know to Anna, I don't know what she expected to see. <clears throat> but it reminded me of when my dad took me to see his his dad living in Belmont at the time, but he was the, that man called Jose Ramon Lopez, my dad's father. He was very sick. He was a tall man. As a matter of fact, he reminds me, Lyndon reminds me a lot of him. And he was lying there in bed and he looked at me and he said, you come to see a sick man? You come to see a sick man? <laughs> I wondered if Anna felt I have come to see a sick man. And um, in the Ghost of Korra, I was, I'm not able to find it, but I, I mentioned that little portion there as a little fella, Eusebio being taken to see his grandfather lying in bed. You know, people come to see you and they wish you well. You walk outside, with your shades on and people notice it and they look they stop <laughs> they momentarily stop look and it's so funny you know you know you are a kind of a spectacle I remember when I had my um my, my back went out and Louise was taking me I had a really back bad back pain I went to see my chiropractor and um I, I needed to walk. So I said, Louis, come go with me to the highway. And as I began to leave the, you know, turn the corner there, the neighbor said, hey, Lance, is you, boy? A man like you always running around the block, boy? Is you, boy? People are very surprised to see people sick, who they're accustomed to seeing, busy and moving fast. But we all get there someday. Calling the one guy on the other street, he said, you know, when I was young, they never told me, you know, they never told me what would happen up in old age. Yes. Some people, unfortunately, don't even reach old age to get sick. You know, things, things fall apart. But my big thing here this morning is the kind of thoughts that pass through your mind. And I want to tell you, you know, one of the main thoughts that will pass through my mind is we have a great God in heaven. And whether it turns out bad or good for any of us, he is still a great God. And he supports us and he puts things in place that we could fill our place in loving him, you know, being obedient. That's the thing that really helps. And I also want to say at this point, thank you to all our subscribers, numerous subscribers who encourage me to do the right thing at this point in time, to do the right thing so that my surgery will have good results. And again, I want to thank the staff of Sight Optical, the staff that um, helped me in Good Health Medical Center. And above all, to keep my thoughts trained while I'm not able to read, while I'm not able to really, you know, look at the screen too much or at all. I, I have here a list which is so very peculiar. A list of do's and don'ts. I don't know of anything. It's difficult to read, but the first one is no cooking. Well, that fits me pretty good because Mama Lou and Lasana, they do take care of all of that stuff. 
And um, <clears throat> strange enough, it says that, um, you know, that I can drive after two days. I can drive after two days. There's an odd one that says like, I might be able to read and watch television. But um, that seems to be a no-no from everybody. So I'm sticking to the ones who might have had better experience. No reading, no looking too long at the screen. But I am glad that you have, you have joined me a bit for breakfast. Uh, they tell me I look like Ray Charles, you know. Ray Charles, like to see, take these dreams from my eyes and let me see. You go cool and no longer keep for me. I don't know if that's a good impersonation, but I think that's how I remember Ray Charles. Yes, my friends. So thanks you, thank you again. Keep your life in order. Because when you get into a situation that you're placed, you know, you're restricted in your movements, you need to have good things to fall back on mentally. You need to remember good things. Remember the people who mean a lot to you in life. The people who are precious, your neighbors, your friends. We have very good friends. I know Louise and I and Asana, Linda and Kim. We have very good friends. And we treasure them. We want to see them do well. We have very good grandchildren, very good children, and we have very good hopes for the future. So my friends, I leave you with this. Keep thinking positively. Be a help to all you can. I know there in this country a lot of people who are afflicted in one way or the other health-wise. And above all, I know at this point in time, there's a lot of grief over ones who have died, precious ones who have meant a lot to our country and we could think of our politicians we could think of our police service the public service we just want to have clean hearts and clean minds that this country will see a great future so thanks once again and all the best i think i'll have after breakfast i'll have this um portugal or portugal as we say and um, thank you for joining me. Have a good Sunday.